but we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. As part of their effort to force Americans into preferred behavior, one of the surprises Pelosi had for restaurant owners was a new federal mandate to publish accurate calorie counts in menus for chains of 20 locations or more. I'm Ed Morrissey, senior correspondent at Hot Air, and I decided to investigate the effects that this federal menu mandate will have on consumers, restaurants, and the economy. No one doubts that obesity has become a problem in the U.S. Will calorie counts on menus solve that problem? That we talked about that uh, obesity is a legitimate health concern. I think both Absolutely. of us agree with that. Is that resolved through calorie counts on menus? Heavens no. That's Ken Shelper, vice president of Devani's, a restaurant chain in the Twin Cities, specializing in pizzas, sandwiches, and salads. Devani's has 21 locations, all within Minnesota, and now has to figure out how to comply with the new federal menu mandate. That yeah. Devani's is not opposed to its consumers knowing the calorie counts of its food, is it? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, you know, we Devani's and our business is a very customer-driven and customer-sensitive business, and, and we don't we don't uh, we don't stay in business. We don't compete if we aren't listening to our customers and providing what they need. In fact, Devani's has a website menu calculator for customers to get an estimate of the caloric content of their menu items. And that's good, because Devani's offers their customers a wide range of options. Like most pizza and sandwich restaurants, they have so many options that they don't use traditional menus and instead offer a build-it-yourself approach. As we can see in this clip, it's an easy system to use. Simply choose your options, hit the big red button, and you get the entire range of nutritional information, not just calorie content. Hey, here's an idea. Why not let Devani's just put a computer on its counter in its stores for its customers to use their own nutritional calculator on their website? Even putting a computer terminal where people could access it themselves and within the restaurants, that's not sufficient any longer. What's being mandated is you have to post the calories on your menu board plus some mandatory disclaimers and, and guidance for the consumer and that sort of stuff as well as where to find all the additional information which again is would be things like carbs and fats and and calories from fats and and sodium and and maybe even trans fat non trans fat whatever but a broad range of stuff you'll have to put on your menu where the customers can find this and they're saying you have to provided in the store. How exactly is that supposed to work? As you can see, the menu board in this store hardly has enough room to list all of the options, let alone calorie counts. What are restaurants like Devani's supposed to do? Also, when you have hard menu boards, uh, and, I, and this applies to, of course, uh, drive throughs which we don't have, but drive through menus and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff, but it also applies to you know, kind of written menus and brochures like this our catering. This is our catering brochure. Oh yeah, very know. nice. Yeah. But we would have to, of course, provide it on there. Now, every time that uh, that you change an ingredient, okay, mm -hmm. or maybe even the manufacturer of a minor ingredient, okay, we get we get a uh, mayonnaise from a different source. Okay, well that's going to change the nutrient information on that mail. Right. So now everything that contains that has to be changed. Well, okay, so you have to change all of your materials. How much could that cost? A couple hundred dollars? Five hundred tops? That exercise uh, costs us about 30000 for you know, somewhere, somewhere in excess of 30000 each time you do it, okay? But that $30,000, $40,000 isn't a good cause. People want this information. They must be knocking your door down to get it, Ken. That's the reason why Barack Obama wants to mandate that you provide it on your menus, to stop that demand, right? You get requests on a fairly continuous basis, my understanding yeah. is that these requests get routed to you yep. about nutritional composition of, of the uh, menu items. How, yeah. how many of those requests relate to the caloric co uh, content of those menu items? I've had one in the last year, <laughs> and basically this person was fine with us just directing them to our website and saying, you know, here's where it is. So let's get this straight. We created a federal mandate that has to be enforced by Washington, D.C. in order to provide information in print 
that most restaurants offer on the internet, all to satisfy a demand that consisted of a single person in a year in the Twin Cities. Well, at least this is a good time for businesses to spend money on frivolous regulation, right? Industry altogether. It's been very tough last couple of years for the industry, and uh, most uh, most operations are uh, losing money or just barely keeping their their nose above water. So this is not necessarily a great time to have brand new mandates come in from from any government about spending more money on on, on any issue. Let Man alone mandates are always are always costly in one way or another, but uh, and, and so I don't know if there's ever a good time for those. But yeah, the timing is pretty poor. <laughs> Indeed, the business climate has been tough for several years in a very competitive industry, and there appears to be little hope of a recovery in the near future. But even if business picked up, what advice would Ken Shelper have for restaurant owners seeking to expand from 19 locations to 20? Of course, Devani's already has 21 locations, so I can be closing locations in response to this. But let's say uh, it, there are other smaller chains that exist in the state of Minnesota. You get a chain that's up around 19 mm -hmm. locations. What's going to be the motivation for that uh, for that chain to expand to its 20th store and, and fall under the uh, auspices of this mandate. Well, cer certainly reduce somewhat. <laughs> well, that's a problem, though, because well, these are these are these places employ people. It how, is. how many people are employed at, a, at an average Devani's? Oh, anywhere from 25 to 70. So, I mean, we're talking about dozens of people that might not get jobs because Correct. somebody doesn't want to open up that 20th restaurant. Correct. That's a possibility. In an economy that has already taken its toll on younger workers, do we need an anti-growth mandate that will kill jobs in the restaurant industry where they traditionally find them and push small businesses into bankruptcy? For Hot Air, I'm Ed Morrissey.